Welcome in to The Fade. I am Clay Travis. She is Kelly Stewart. I am back on the winning trail, at least in college football. Going to try to continue that for all of you. Kelly, how are you doing? Hey, that's good to hear, Clay. Uh, look, I had some real daggers to the heart last weekend. Just some real gut-wrenching losses. Auburn, North Carolina. And the worst one of all... The loss was tough to they're up 21 10 with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter attempting a field goal they're an underdog because I loved Auburn too and they managed to lose outright and not cover in the final 10 minutes that was brutal yeah North Carolina same thing and uh then I also had Western Kentucky to beat BC they were up 21 nothing at one point or I'm sorry, excuse me 20 nothing end up losing 21 nothing it yeah, was I gross so there were some really painful moments, uh, but Arizona Moneyline did come in for me. So I got to end on a high note, and then I've been keeping it really, really light in the NFL, doing some teasers and just sticking to one or two bets a week because the NFL has been really interesting this year. Not a lot of favorites cashing, and as a dog better, I just keep picking the wrong underdogs. All right, let's start with big games in college football. I've got a lot of my picks. They're up early. Kelly, I'll start with um, – l- let's start with my blood bank. So tap the veins. I got Texas A&M minus one and a half against Mizzou. Um, I love the Aggies at home. I know for you A&M fans out there that your record against top teams in College Station has been brutal in the past several years. But I just, I'm not sold on this Mizzou team. They were not fabulous against Boston College. I know they had a bye, but they were very fortunate to win in double overtime against Vanderbilt. Um, I like A&M minus, I got them at a point and a half. I know that number's ticking out some and I like the under. Do you have a read on this one, Kelly? Yeah, Clay, I laid it with a on Monday. I laid two. Uh, that one kind of bounced back and okay. forth a little bit. Uh, not a great number. I agree with you. Texas A&M is tough to back at home versus ranked opponents, but I love betting against ranked opponents getting points. Usually a trap situation. I'm almost hoping that Connor, uh, excuse me, Connor Wegman doesn't play. I almost would feel better about it, but to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. This is a play against Missouri, not a play on Texas A&M. Okay, Um, other big games that are out there. I like South Carolina plus the points against Ole Miss. We both took, I think, Kentucky. I know I had Kentucky. I think you like Kentucky in that one. And I like Auburn plus a just an absolute boatload of points against Georgia. Uh, do you have any read on either of those? I uh, South Carolina could very easily be undefeated. Columbia is a hard place to play. Uh, I thought Ole Miss got exposed a little bit against Kentucky. Um, I, I can't believe this line is at nine and a half, particularly because next week is LSU, which is another tough game for Ole Miss. What do you think about those? Play, I'm with you on South Carolina. This one I had circled over the summer. I like to look for these flat spots where teams might get caught looking ahead. But Ole Miss messed around and lost outright. Uh, that doesn't change that yeah. I still like the spot for the Gamecocks. You have this Rebels team that was getting all of this hype. I love Lane Kiffin. Great guy, great coach. But they've won four games against teams that are combined 6-12 and 12 with only two wins over actual FBS teams. You've got a Colorado, or excuse me, a Carolina team off a bye. Ah, Sellers is going to be back. He's nothing right to write home about. But they do have one of the best running backs in the SEC in Sanders. I like this SE defense. They have a very talented O-line that gets to the quarterback, puts pressure on them, 14 sacks on the season. Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks, 15-9 and nine against the spread at home as underdogs. I like them here in this spot. I think plus 260 is worth a sprinkle as well. Um, All right. A couple of other things that are out there. I'm taking Auburn. I understand I'm going to be like the only person betting Auburn at Georgia. Coming off that loss, I think everybody expects Georgia to blow out Auburn. Here's the deal. Auburn's two and three. I get it. I don't have to explain it to all the Auburn fans out there. Three losses, Cal, Arkansas, and now Oklahoma at home. But it's really just because they keep turning the ball over. Their defense is not awful. And if they can just be somewhat normal in the turnover space, 
this 24 and a half number is way too high. Kelly, you remember last year, Auburn almost beat Georgia on the Plains. I don't think there's three touchdowns plus difference in talent between Auburn and Georgia. A rivalry game, we know all those things. Georgia's dominated of late. Uh, but I got Auburn plus 24 and a half in this one. That's a crazy number. I'm checking to see what it's at right now. Uh, are you? Do you agree that I'm going to be like the only guy uh, on there, out there in the world that's on Auburn? I can see why everybody wants to back Georgia. But Clay, each week we put on uh, OutKick Top 12. Who was your number one pick? Uh, my number one pick this week was Alabama. Okay. number. It was Georgia number two? Uh, Georgia was my, uh, uh, I think I had, well, with the way we set it up, right? The way I do it is Ohio State, because they're going to, the top four have to be conference champs. Uh, but I okay. believe I had Georgia at six right after Tennessee at five. So you and I are pretty close, right? So I had Georgia at five because I'm not a Tennessee homer. But the reality is yes. this is not the Georgia team we've seen in the past because they don't have 24-year-olds playing for them anymore. Those guys are all in the NFL. I would agree with you. This is a lot of points. But as I just mentioned, you and I both had a terrible loss with Auburn last week because of those turnovers. And that's exactly what I said on the show. Yep. They had 14 turnovers going to the game last week. You turn the ball over like that against Georgia, you're going to get smoked. I'm going to sit this one out, but I, I agree with you. It looks like Auburn or pass. Okay, two more SEC games. I This is the – and I want to get your read on this – Alabama is only favored, I'm looking at it right now, by 22 and a half over Vanderbilt. Um, I bet Alabama earlier in the week at 23, so the number has come down. This was my kind of eye raise moment. Again, we mentioned that Vanderbilt lost in double overtime on the road against Mizzou. They had a bye week. Alabama is coming off a huge win over Georgia. This makes me think that Vegas is expecting a close game because the number is coming down, and you tell me if you think I'm wrong, Kelly. I would bet almost everybody in terms of raw numbers is betting Alabama here. I see why. they, Like you said, you made them number one. They look like the best team in the country after, well, basically manhandling Georgia for the first half. So here's my advice. My buddy Ralph suggested this on the college football show he and I do on Wednesdays. He said, if you like Alabama, look at them in the first half. Because if they take their foot off the gas and leave that back door open for this Vanderbilt team, which they very well could, something to look at situationally. This is definitely a flat spot for the Tide, and that is simply because of that big win. Do teams tend to overlook teams named South Florida, Vanderbilt? Yes, of course, when you're Alabama, you're going to do that. I made the game 28 and a half. So when this line came out, yep. I thought, oh, I'm dead wrong somewhere here. So I immediately decided to stay away. But that's my best advice. Vanderbilt probably covers the game by the back door. Alabama, if you like them, take them in the first half. Um, all right. Other one, you've been hating on my balls all year. On the road at Arkansas at night, uh, this is obviously a place where Arkansas has been tough to beat. I am on Tennessee. I like Tennessee minus 13 and a half, Kelly. Number is stuck right around 13 and a half all week. Um, here's why I like Tennessee. It's been right around two touchdowns. Taylon Green over his last three weeks has not been very accurate throwing the football. Tennessee is coming off a bye week after the big win over Oklahoma. That means that I don't think they're still going to be riding high. Defense tends to travel. In particular, defensive lines tend to travel pretty well. Um, I don't think that Arkansas is going to be able to move the ball consistently. And this is somewhat interesting. While Nico has gotten a lot of attention, he turned the ball over twice on the neutral game against NC State. He turned the ball over twice in the game against uh, Oklahoma. Tennessee is going to be healthy back on the line of scrimmage. But if Nico just plays a clean sheet, that is, doesn't have a bad game, doesn't have multiple turnovers, I think Tennessee's going to blow Arkansas out. What do you think? Here's the problem. You guys blow out teams that are not very good. By all intents and purposes, you guys did what you needed to do to beat Oklahoma, and it showed because you guys won the time of possession. I think that's going to be the same key here to beating Arkansas. The difference is, is Arkansas actually has a better quarterback 
and a better running back than Oklahoma does. They also have a better offensive line. I think this is a lot of points. It not being 14 was kind of telling to me. I wrote Arkansas down on my long list. You mentioned how tough it is to play in Fayetteville. We know Tennessee's the better team. But again, this is still college football. And college kids, just like professionals, have off days. I think Tennessee is going to win this game. But I don't know if they're going to cover. I think this one might be too many points. Because, look, when you're looking at teams trying to control the time of possession, Arkansas is going to do the same thing. Kind of leans, bodes well for an under. I know you guys are putting up 50 and 60 against no-name schools. I just don't think that's going to be the case against Arkansas. Uh, okay, a couple of other things. Friday night, this is going to catch people by surprise. Decent games. I'm taking UNLV, Barry Odom. We know all the drama at the quarterback position. They went out and destroyed Fresno State. And I'm taking Oregon. That's both home favorites. Big number against Michigan State. I get it. My rationale on Oregon is they're starting to hit their stride a little bit better. Uh, Michigan State coming off a really tough beatdown against Ohio State. Um, so that is my breakdown there. You lived in Vegas for a long time. UNLV having success truly that they haven't had since the 1970s to be sitting at 4-0. and Are you playing either Friday night game? So I'm not playing either. I'll say this about UNLV. Kudos to them. 4-0, and not only straight up, but against the spread. People love to see it. People are going to want to back them. So the bookmakers are going to start putting a premium on them. Don't forget, this is kind of a short week for them. And then Syracuse is off a of buy. So a little asterisk there, even though I'm not getting involved. And the interesting thing here about Dan Lanning uh, Jonathan Smith, if you guys remember, was at Oregon State. So these two know each other well. Michigan State, solid defense. I'm not sure Oregon is starting to hit that stride yet. We'll see. They have Ohio State on deck. That might be a, a look-ahead spot of sorts. This is a lot of points. We'll see what the Ducks have up their sleeve because we know offensively Sparty is nothing to write home about. Um, okay, a couple of other games that I've got, and I'm curious if you have any. I'm taking UCLA plus the points against Penn State. That number has come back. I know it's an early kick, but it feels steep. Uh, Rutgers, Nebraska, the under. Um, I'm taking Clemson to blow out uh, Florida State. Any of those on your list? Uh, Florida State's on my do not bet list, so we'll skip right over yes. that one because I do not trust that team. I do not trust Mike Norvell, and I do not trust – all of the drama in that locker room. I will say this. I think Rutgers ends up beating Nebraska. I know a lot of people and like this like side. they're like a seven-point dog, right? They're, yeah, they're a substantial seven. underdog on the road against Nebraska. Yeah, and they opened six and a half, and, and Nebraska got bet. And I don't want to disrespect anybody that bet Nebraska, but look, this is a really good defense. I had a buddy text me earlier in the week, Clay, and goes, yeah, but they're not as good as Illinois. And I, So I get on the Google machine. You know, you got to pull up some data. No, in total defense, they're not as good as Illinois. But in third down conversions, being able to stop teams, they're one of the best in the country. They have a great passing defense, and they can stop the run. I think this line is a little steep. I made it four and a half, so I'm on the Scarlet Knights here. Greg Schiano and this team do really good battling, uh, rattling off back-to-back -back wins. Seven, one, and one against the spread after an outright win in his career there uh, in New Jersey. So I'm backing them to get the outright win in Lincoln. Uh, okay, the uh, Clemson, you said you're not touching Florida State. Um, and then I like the under in that one. I've also got Michigan-Washington, the under. I don't think either team has an offense at all. Uh, and I'm taking the over. You're down in Florida. Would you have ever believed that Central Florida would be favored outright? At least they were nearly a, touch to, uh, nearly a field goal favorite over Florida, even with – Central Florida coming off the beatdown that Colorado gave them, and even with Florida coming off a bye week. Yeah, it's that bad. I mean, Napier's going to get canned, isn't he? I mean, that's literally what this is telling me. I miss the days when UCF would beat Florida in a bowl game or something fun as, you know, a sizable underdog, but those days are long gone. I did not understand last week how Central Florida was a 14-point favorite over anyone in the Big 12, but I was not going to back Dion and Colorado because we haven't seen them play enough defense. They absolutely manhandled Central Florida. Uh, I Maybe Central Florida was looking ahead to this one just because it is big brother of sorts. 
I don't want anything to do with the game. I think both teams are absolute dumpster fires. KJ Jefferson's got some problems. Florida's defense has not been great. We'll see how that one ends up panning out. I'll go back to the one that you just glossed over. You said you didn't want a whole lot to do with Washington, Michigan. I laid it with Washington. Um, I looked at this Michigan team last week. I bet against them. I had Minnesota. I had a bad number. Was very lucky to get the cover. Minnesota basically woke up in the second half, or did they finally wear down Michigan's defense? And I think that's what we're going to be able to see this Washington team do. We'll see if the Huskies have enough in the tank uh, to be able to win this game at home. But I expect them to be able to at least show some face against Michigan. This is a Washington team that I was down on all year. This is a Michigan team that I think is getting a little too much hype for beating USC. All right, and if anything, college football, what's your favorite? Those are all my picks. You can all see the college football gambling picks I've got up at OutKick. What do you like the most? I know we overlapped on some of those, but what are your favorite college football games? So my three favorites are Rutgers, as we already talked about, South Carolina, and my best bet is Cal plus 10.5. I love Cal entirely too much this week. Full disclosure, I really – thought they had a good shot to win out in Auburn. And not only did they win outright, they won in a convincing fashion. And that's because Justin Wilcox has this defense humming. They have not given up the types of yardage that we've seen the Canes hang on everybody else. This is going to be the toughest defense they faced. Oh, and by the way, they're off a bye. This is also the first time Miami's even left the state of Florida this season, and they have to go to Berkeley. It's absolutely insane. Give a shout-out to Chris Felica for this one. I saw on his Twitter earlier. Mario Cristobal, 0-3 against Cal. 19.3 points per game in his time there in Oregon. Look, throw a little cherry on top. This Cal defense has already seen Cam Ward because he played for Washington State last year. Check that box score while you're bored at work. and You can see how well he fared against this defense. Uh, all right, love all of that. That, by the way, would be a big – do you like them to pull off the upset complete, uh, I do. potentially? Or what? do you think – yeah. I mean, look, Virginia Tech gave them basically the blueprint. You've got to be able to wear down Miami. And we saw USF be able to do it in the first half, and then ultimately there was too much talent on that team. This defense is really good. 36 turnovers in the past two seasons. They are leading uh, an FBS – this defense is just that good. I can't help but take the points. I think it's absolutely worth a money line sprinkle. Come on, Clay. Used to be Pac-12 after dark, now ACC after dark. I'll hop on board because I probably will need to save uh, to make some money at the end of the Saturday. All right, let's go into the NFL. Tonight, uh, again, we tape every Thursday, Bucks falcons I'm on Kelly the over 43 uh, and a half in this uh, in this game. I like Kirk Cousins and what I'm seeing. I like Baker Mayfield and the Bucks offense. NFC South rival game, all of those things. Uh, I'm taking the over. Are you playing Thursday night football at all? Yeah, I took the wussy way out. I put Tampa in a bunch of teasers. There's some really great teaser spots this week. You can tease uh, Tampa with Cincinnati. You could have used Buffalo early in the week. You cannot use them now because they're down to one. You could possibly still use Cleveland, depending on if your book has two and a half or three. Lots of really great spots uh, as well to use teams like the Colts, whether it's Anthony Richardson or not. It doesn't matter. Joe Flacco, we know, is just fine. But back to tonight's game, I thought that was the easiest way out. These divisional, like, Primetime games are always a little wonky. I know you like the over. I would not be surprised to see this one end like 24-23 in the slightest. Either team won. Tampa Bay has been really good on the road. And I'll say that much. I've watched this team a lot since I moved down to Florida. They've got a really scrappy defense. And Baker Mayfield has this locker room. They like playing for him. So keep that in mind. But yes, Tampa and teasers for Thursday night football. What do you like the best in the NFL this weekend? It's disgusting. It is absolutely and utterly repulsive. I hate it so much. But I have some data to back it up, and it is the Denver Broncos minus two and a half. This defense has only allowed 16 points in this last two games. So everybody's texting me, Kelly, you finally Bo leave. No, this has nothing to do with Bo Nix. 
Honix has a one to four touchdown to interception ratio. I want nothing to do with him, but it doesn't matter if it's him or anybody else coming off that bench. We know that there's some really inherent issues there in Las Vegas. Devonte Adams is saying, Hey, I want to trade. And Oh, by the way, my hamstring hurts this week. We know Max Crosby is banged up. So keep an eye there. But one of the things I wanted to look at and what I really enjoy about what I get to do is being around guys with insane da- databases. So I text my buddy. And I said, we have Denver off back to back touchdown underdog wins. That's pretty significant, right? So they walk into uh, Tampa Bay, win outright. They walk into the New York Jets, win outright. How do they fare when they get back home and they are a home favorite? Almost 67%. So I said, all right, it's been really tough for me in the NFL. I've been going one and one every single week. I'm just picking one winner this week. It is the Denver Broncos. I'm on the under in that game. You talked about how good the Bronco defense has been. Uh, look, I'm not sold on the Raider offense. I'm on the under. That's my uh, one of my six in the outkick six-pack. I mentioned that I like the over on Bucks falcons Jets-Vikings. Uh, this number stinks a little bit to me. I know the Jets had the tough loss at home. Um, I don't know why the Vikings sitting at uh, a two-and-a-half-point favorite here. Feels a little suspect. Basically, it seems like Vegas is saying the Jets are going to come in and win, but I'm going to take the Vikings. Uh, Dolphins, Pats, Kelly, I watched the Titans-Dolphins uh, game. It's one of the worst games I've ever seen. Ever. The Dolphins have no offense right now uh, without Tua. They can't score anything. The Patriots are really bad offensively as well. Uh, I don't see unless they have defensive scores or you know punt returns or block kicks or whatever. I don't see any way that game goes over. I'm on the under. Um, Bills Texans I think could be a sneaky, really fun game. I like uh, Josh Allen uh, and C.J. Stroud going head to head. The over to hit in that one, um, and then I'm taking the Cowboys on the road plus the points at the Steelers. Uh, Those are uh, my six outkick big games. I like the Cowboys uh, to to avoid complete disaster against the Steelers, whose offense I still don't believe uh, believe in. And uh, that would be my breakdown. I don't know if you have any strong takes on any of those. Yeah, Dallas, another really good teaser spot up over a touchdown in prime time. It is just sell, sell, sell right now on Dallas. And that's because they refuse to step up on defense. And I understand, uh, you know, you've got this run defense against Pittsburgh. Who's going to run? I would love to be on Dallas, but I can't. I agree with you. It looks like an under type game, which makes me like the teaser spot even more. Another game I gave out um, on some of my other shows because it was close enough to being a play, and ultimately, we know I'm going to be on it. It's a buy-low spot. Divisional underdogs always get a look from me, particularly in the AFC North. This line is always three. I don't care if one of the teams is really good. The Steelers could be the worst team in the division. They're going to be a three-point home dog. They're going to be a three-point road favorite. Cincinnati, two-and-a-half two, point, two and a half point home dog tells me all I need to know. Baltimore, what did we see them do on Monday Night Football? Oh, yeah, that's right. They just absolutely wrecked the guy that we're ready to give the Lombardi trophy to and Josh Allen and the Bills. And now they play who? Cincinnati. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase finally get a win. This team has been awful, but the Bengals defense has been even worse. This offense is finally starting to click, and I think that they get a nice win here over Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. I understand John Harbaugh has been really good on the road and really good in the division, but this line stinks to the high heavens. The whole world is going to be on Baltimore. Good stuff, Kelly. Uh, I will be with you next Thursday, um, and uh, I cannot wait. Hopefully, we will have some good luck in the gambling process. I'm going to go straight from here, sit down, write up my OutKick six-pack, and uh, those picks will be up soon. Kelly will be back with you next Thursday when my Tennessee Volunteers will be 5-0. and Did you see, by the way? Tennessee is favored by 20 points over Florida in the look-ahead, which is – Kind of Lots of revenge on the mind of those balls. Tennessee. Yeah, I yes, saw that. No it was Kelly, uh, it was kind of kind of a little overblown. We'll see if Florida doesn't get up after they fire their head coach. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, good stuff as always. We'll be back next Thursday. Thank you for hanging out with us on the fade. Get rich, hopefully, off these picks. See you then.